Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it's Thursday. It's February the 15th, and this will be our chart lesson for today. And this will wrap up our week. No chart lessons on Fridays. So um, it looked like it was going to be a range day today. We were stuck in this tight range earlier. Here's your overnight high and your overnight low. Usually when prices are in between there, it's a range day. We had a little failed break out the bottom, and then we reversed, and we traded up all the way into the close, as you can see right there. So uh, a really nice trading day. Um, that's why I'm always talking about if you can catch these failed breaks lower, uh, a lot of times they're great places to enter. And it may be an important low for the day, or if it breaks out the top side, it could be an important high for the day. Um, a lot of reasons to like those trades. So, um, unfortunately, the only the next higher low is way up here. But still, it turns out to be a good trade if you can catch any of those. So, uh, we'll talk about that when we get to it. But you can see we were inside this range here. And when we broke lower, you looked for a measured move down. We went right on through that. But you would also look... Uh, never grabs the one you want. What is the deal here? All right. You measure that leg right there and look for a measured move. And you can see we had a perfect measured move actually to the tick right there. So it doesn't get any better than that as far as finding your target. Um, and when we went on through, that's what I would have, that would have been my first target. And if we went further, I would have measured both of those and drug it over here and, and see if we get a measured move on that. But it turns out we got it right off of that line, that first move there. Then there's a little two-legged correction, which is often the center of a pattern. And then we got the measured move down. So always keep that in mind. And that's what, another reason we like second entries uh, when... Um, Prices are trending, and this is definitely prices are trending down here at this point. So, um, but let's back out a little bit where we can see a little better, and we'll go through the trades and we'll wrap the week up. Uh, you have to be a little patient this morning. Uh, Seven o'clock came on the move down here, and then we uh, traded up again here. This is just a little breakout. This is a little congestion area, and we failed out the top. Um, that's earlier in the day though. And then we pushed right on through and pulled back and test it and get a little second entry short right here. Notice that low, there's a first entry then it goes higher and then it turns and gives you a second entry right there. Um, you want to make sure you got enough room here. So you might let it break lower and, uh, and tick a little bit higher. There's still plenty, enough room to get out here, but you might let it break lower and give yourself a little more room because that's a fairly big bar. You would you could have gotten filled at least a tick back into that bar, maybe two, depending on how yours set up. Yours could have set up different than me. Um, I did make it green just simply because it's uh, it's just a it's not a perfect second entry setup. Um, it's really just a little breakout pullback after we broke out of this little trading range here. This isn't real close to being, you could argue for this to be red. I mean, I could have made it red just as easy, but I left it green just simply because there wasn't a lot of room there, even though that's uh, probably enough to get out. It's pushing it, so to speak. And I mean, you more than had enough to get out of there. I think there's a couple of points down to that low. So uh, you could have scalped out of that pretty, you know, fairly easily. But you got to be concerned with that support across there so just keep that in mind and again you could argue for that to be red uh, it actually broke higher first and turned in down here so um, I like that when it does that that's I mean it tells you you probably trapped a lot of longs right there uh, and it pushed down here pretty quickly before it, the bind came in of course the people are buying the break below the double bottom there expecting it to reverse and guess what that's exactly what happens and so that's what you're really looking for when you're getting down here you're starting to think longs um, it's, it's generally when you're wanting to go short off a range you're sell the highs and you buy the lows of the range and so when, there wasn't a whole lot of information telling you that it was a range yet but it's starting to look like one uh, because if you move this over at this point 
it just looks like we're moving lower. You can see that, you know, there's not enough. That's what it would have looked like when you put your, you know, when you sold there. And, you know, that's not looking like a range yet. That's a break of that little short-term channel. And one leg, and it looks like you may start a second leg down. And we could have been coming down to test this overnight low. So, um, so that was worth risking, in my opinion. And, but, of course, it comes down here, fails, breaks lower and fails below that little double bottom. And this is not a very good signal bar, but this one is. So when it broke above that one, uh, your stop still had to go below here. And that makes it a fairly big stop from this high to this low. So, um, and plus you're generally better off to wait on a lower high, but that doesn't come to way back up here. And I just wasn't crazy about that one. It broke lower and turned and went out the other side. So again, you could argue for that one. Um, I'm going to make it green though, because it's not back to the EMA. We're very close to this previous high right across here. And uh, you notice that when it, when you when you got this, uh, well, actually, we didn't have that high yet, but we had this one, right? This is like a little push past this high and testing that little breakout of the trading range there again, and it goes higher. But uh, because you had this high over here, we could, that's kind of a, you can see it, prices working both sides of that line. So that's probably going to be your support resistance line. And you got to be careful going long right into that. So you need room here. And this is one, if it broke higher, you drop a limit order a little further back, you could have got filled all the way back to here and then wrote it back up. But you're better off just to wait in that case and see if you don't get a failed second entry short, which you do. And so I like that one. And again, make sure you got enough room. So you might let it break higher and drop a limit order or a tick or two back just to make sure you got enough room to get out. And uh, that would have been an easy scalp. Uh, it breaks higher and fails, uh, but, and that's a fairly small bar considering what we've been having lately. That one's uh, five ticks. So it's still a little bit, that's like, you know, it's still a little bit more than our, uh, I mean, it, that at least falls within our criteria of, of not being more than uh, eight ticks. So you can trade that one right there. And, uh, Although I think you're better off to wait on a lower high because that's the first break and we're not quite back to this high. So that could be where we're headed. So I'm not crazy about that one. I didn't even mark it green because it's right at that support resistance and it, it closed and held on the other side. So uh, I wasn't crazy about that one. And then it moves all the way down. You finally get a lower high right here, right off that trend line. And, um, I like that one. Looking for it to come back down to the low. It didn't quite get there, but it more than easily made your scalp, and then it bounces. On a day like this, uh, with prices being range bound, I wouldn't be trying to, you know, even if your bars are bigger, I'd be careful trying to get more than, you know, trying to get more than your regular four tick scalp because this is looking more like normal price action. So just keep that in mind. Uh, I'd only do that when we got big trends and the big bars, when you know prices are moving easily, uh, more points than you're going to need. So, uh, and this is a good reason because when we look at it bounces, it goes straight to the top and you really don't get a chance. To, I mean, it does close outside and get a new low, but because it hadn't got back to this low, I'd be real leery about entering there. I'd want a higher low and you never get one until here. And notice what happens. You're moving up. You get that first entry. You go higher. You get that second entry short. It fails. Uh, this is a little bit sideways, so I made it green. Otherwise, I would have made it red uh, because it is a failed second entry short. And it's probably going to trap people trying to ride this back to the other side. But uh, I made it green just simply because there's a lot of overlap. There's a lot of bars, uh, uh, stems on each side, stems, feathers, whatever you like to call them. Uh, but notice what happens. It pushes back up. It breaks out. You get a first entry short. It goes up again. You get a second entry short, and then it reverses. So there's a failed second entry short. It actually went lower and turns. It goes out the other side. I wouldn't mind going long right there, but definitely above this bar as well. And again, it's a fairly big bar. That bar is like, I mean, that's a, 10 tick bar so it's way outside the two point range so 
let it break higher and drop a limit order in there if you're you know if you're having to stay within the rules and it, you could have gotten filled all the way back to here and so uh, easily and then it takes off again I didn't feel comfortable entering on any of these other pullbacks here uh, this one maybe because it's a little breakout pullback from all this resistance across here and you can see that little resistance so you might have considered this one and um, I'll at least make that one green and then it comes back again but definitely we're too high now we've been turning down right there I, I'm starting to think shorts at this point um, because now you've had your break and you've had several swings up trying to make a new high so when it makes this double test right here with a little lower high and a fairly reasonable bar away from the EMA, I like that one. If nothing else, just to ride it back to the EMA and get a quick scout. But you could have ended up riding this all the way down. And uh, again, um, you get another chance to enter here on a second entry. That's But your signal bar is terrible and you're so close to this low. And now you need to be thinking longs again. And of course it bounces right there. And now you've tested this level two more times after this first couple of times. So it's you've got enough information now to say, hey, we're probably going to at least go back to the EMA, even if we go lower. And so I like going long right there. And, of course, it goes to the EMA, gets a close outside this little trend line, makes a new high, and off to the races it goes. Uh, I'm not crazy about entering short here simply because you would expect prices to probably try to go here. So there's a chance you could see a little trap. So just sit tight on this one because this is where you got to be careful in the middle of no man's land. Uh, a lot of times you're better off just to sit tight and not do anything unless you get a trap or something. And that's kind of why I made these two green here because it's kind of in the middle of no man's land where too many crazy things can happen. So, And of course you would have missed this really nice move down, but hey, that you have to do that sometimes. And again, I would have measured this and that would be my first target and I would have measured uh, from here to here and drug it over as I showed you and that would be my second target of course we met that one to the tick but notice what happens you make a new low then a first entry pull back second entry uh, this bar is not very bearish but the one next to it you just kind of combine those two and that would have been a really bearish bar with those matching lows so if we break below that we're probably going to drop on down and off it goes and then you you get a little breakout pullback short right here for when it broke below these this support area right here it comes back and tests it it comes back and tries to test the EMA as well look at that big bearish bar uh, it's a little close to the low so again you might let it break lower and drop a lemon order and you could have got filled a couple of ticks back in this one at least and off it goes looking for that measured move and then it pulls back and gets a failed second entry long and it's a pull back to test that uh, support resistance line and so with two legs down and that pulling back and enough room to get out I like that one and that's a fairly bearish bar it's a fairly small bar um, I'm just not going to be able to get what I want here What the heck? There we go. Uh, that one's six ticks, so it falls. You got just enough room to do what you want to do there, and it is. If you see that little trend line, I actually got the arrow there. I don't know what happened to my trend line, but it confirms that trend line as well. So that's I like that trade. Um, I really like trying to ride this back. I, I, you know, honestly, I'd like. You know, most of the times I'm probably going to take that trade. But here's a good example. If you had taken it here, you'd have got burned. But now you've got three pushes down, which is one more than you would expect, and a fairly bullish bar. So, um, you know, we'll mark it green. But it's dangerous trying to pick bottoms. But if you catch this, the reason I do like this one and don't consider it bottom picking quite as much is because it's the break outside of the overnight low and two you know measured you know you can see those two levels of this thing that are perfect so there's a good chance it's at least coming back to test the EMA and it might turn out to be a major low of the day and guess what it does um, 
as always, you're better off to wait on the higher low. And look what I was. This thing just shoots right through the EMA, pulls back and tests it one, two, three times, and then bounces. Uh, I like going long above that bar. And uh, that's your higher low. And then you actually get your failed second entry long after two measured legs up. It tries to go down once, and it tries to go again. And that's not a very good signal bar. It is a second entry long as well. But because it, it qualifies as a failed second entry short, I like that one. And off it goes. And notice it made a double bottom, so there's yet another failed second entry short right there. And I like going long. And let me explain this real quick. This is a spike in the channel. So I was playing this as the trend line. But when we broke lower, uh, I just drug that, made a copy of that line and drug it over and see how prices are crawling up it. So um, it's possible that's your trend line. And then you got a midline right in here. And you see how that fits perfectly. So that's what it turns out to be. Um, but I played it as um, a spiking channel. And so um, where were we were on this trade right here. And then um, that's a new low. So first entry, second entry. Uh, I wasn't as crazy about this one. Um, because we just came off the high again and we're right there at it. It would have worked. It does fit the criteria. It's a failed second entry short. But I think you're better off to wait. Uh, and then you get the next leg down. And it's a double test of this previous support resistance area. Nice bullish bar uh, right at the key entry point, right at the EMA. So I like going long there. Uh, that one turned out to be another nice trade. And then, of course, that's a new low. So first entry. Uh, right there, and then a second entry short right at the EMA, right at the key entry point again. Go long right there. Uh, same thing, then it comes back one more time. And at this point, you would expect prices are going back to test that high. And so this one, you could easily argue for it to be um, green. But this is a fairly strong trend, and you got to figure we're probably going to test that high now. So I, I like this one. Uh, notice how this line's holding every single time. We're probably going to push on up and test that. And notice I tried to turn down there, but it ended up pushing on through and going to the upper side and actually overshooting it slightly. And then look what happens. You get a two-legged move back. And a lot of times, that's the uh, middle of a bigger pattern. So uh, with that being a second entry long and then you're dragging that line down, you actually wouldn't have known that it fit there yet. That would have been the first bar you drug it down to. So, but notice you get a close outside and a new low. And um, you're a little bit away from the EMA. So I like, if you want to be a little aggressive, I like that one. It, it's definitely aggressive. You get a higher low here, but look how that bar is more bearish than it is even neutral. It's neutral to bearish. And you can't get back through the EMA. But it does push on through there. And then you get that failed second entry short right off the support resistance area. Um, very bullish bar. New low, first entry, second entry. So it's a failed second entry short. So I like going long right there. And off it goes again. Especially considering this could be the center of a pattern. And you should have been played around with your line here to make sure that, hey, that maybe this is a midline, which it turned out to be as I showed you a minute ago. And off it goes. Uh, I didn't like entering here. Um, it's a breakout pullback. It's just a first entry. Now you got a new high. Um, it's right into the 2 o'clock hour. So I think you had to skip that one. And that took you on into the 2 o'clock hour. And notice you actually had another two-legged pullback up here with another bullish bar. And that would have been another great place to enter. Except it was late in the day. So it turned out to be a really good trading day. Um, it got a little bit slow right in here you had to just be a little patient um but once we made this low it was a pretty good day from then on up and it's really a pretty good day after you know all the way around is nothing really difficult about today if you understand how to do the things that we we do here so it's not a real difficult day to find your shorter term trends to find your trend lines and so forth so uh, especially right in here this was a clear range day 
Um, you just didn't get a lot of higher lows and lower highs, unfortunately. So uh, kind of made that a little bit more risky to trade like that. But anyway, I'm going to wrap it up and get this uploaded a little earlier today. Um, this wraps it up for the week. No chart lesson tomorrow. I hope you had a good trading week. Uh, we'll be back again to do it Monday, but I'm out here for today. This is Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and we'll see you next time.